Tony Candela here with CE Auto Electric Supply and today we're going to talk about charging systems. There seems to be a great deal of misunderstanding about the role of each of the components. Today we're going to talk about the alternator, the battery, and the accessories. We have here to my left a 50 amp adjustable power supply that's going to simulate an alternator on a vehicle. We have a couple of uh, voltmeters. We have a uh, AGM style 10 amp hour battery. And we have a headlight, which is going to be our accessory. <clears throat> so let's take a closer look at that. Let's show you the specifics of how this arrangement can replicate the charging system on any vehicle. Now before we begin, let's talk about something specific about this power supply. This is just an Astron 50 amp variable power supply. These have been around forever. Car Audio guys have been using these things since the 90s or even before. Um, the AC plug on it actually has a third prong. Now I've got one uh, of the uh, probes of the meter hooked to the negative output on the back of the power supply. And let me just show you that in fact we do have continuity. So what we're going to do is we don't have continuity at any of the other terminals we just have continuity at that one we're going to use a 3 to 2 to lift that so now we've got um, no way that the power supply could seek ground or continue to pass ground through this terminal um, through either of these two we have no continuity there so we'll plug that into the wall now what that third prong is for is that third prong is to protect us in the event something happens to this power supply we don't have voltage present on its case um, so when you lift it like that you lose that protection the reason I'm lifting it is because I don't want anyone to think that ground from the earth is somehow going to affect what you're going to see from this point forward so let's proceed Okay, let's run through the basics real quick on what we've got here on the bench. Um, basically, we've got our Astron power supply on the left, and it's a 50 amp unit variable up to, uh, you know, about 14.8 volts, rough and tough. Um, on the right, we've got a small 10 amp hour battery, and we've got a couple of DMMs. Um, we're going to use the uh, Fluke 88 on the left and the Fluke 87 on the right to uh, monitor current at different points in the circuit. Uh, we've got our old school Keithley voltmeter here and uh, we've just got it so where we can actually monitor voltage. So we've got a series of six junction studs, the uh, three across the front, one, two, three, um, our power and then the three across the rear are ground and you'll notice we've got our power supply connected to the two on the left we've got our battery connected to the two on the right we've got our accessory which in this case is a headlight connected to the two in the middle and uh, those are all connected by jumpers so uh, let's take a look real quick um, and let's just disconnect one of these jumpers in the front disconnecting the uh, the battery from the power supply just putting the surface charge in the battery real quick so we can see we've got two different voltage plateaus available um, the power supply is variable it can be anywhere from you know as low as nothing to as high as about 14.8 volts and then if we just take a look at what we've got available from our battery over there um, you can see the battery's got a surface charge. It's 12.6 volt battery um, and it's sitting at about 12.8 volts. So freshly charged. So for the remainder of this demonstration we're just going to monitor voltage at this side. So um, let's begin. Let's first take a look at uh, just how um, Kirchhoff's law dictates how current flows through a circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the DMM on the left and we'll set it to record amperage and we're going to disconnect this jumper here and we'll connect it in such a way 
that we can look at current flowing on the positive side uh, between our power supply and our light. And then let's connect this DMM. Set it to monitor current as well. And we're going to connect it on the negative side um, so that we can look at current flowing from the headlight back to the power supply. So if we turn our headlight on, you can see that those numbers are the same. So we have um, approximately 4 amps flowing from the power supply to the headlight and approximately 4 amps returning from the headlight um, back through the power supply to its negative terminal. And so since those are kind of redundant, we really don't need to uh, monitor uh, current at both of those locations. Um, Kirchhoff's law basically says that this has to happen. I just wanted to prove to you guys that in fact it does. And if you'll notice, I've got the um, amateur on the negative side hooked up in such a way where we've got the black terminal on the ground and the red on the return from the headlight and the opposite is true for the DMM on the positive side. So both of the DMMs indicate positive current flow, um, which in this case would be this way. Okay, so now let's uh, disconnect the DMM from the negative side and we'll connect that back up. And now let's take a look at uh, what it takes to keep a surface charge on our battery. And we can do that by simply connecting the other DMM to the battery. Notice I've got the plus on the battery plus and I've got the negative you know, on the uh, center terminal here, which in this case is going to be just common for both the DMMs. And at, let's raise it up to 14.4 volts, which would be indicative of a properly functioning alternator. Um, you'll notice we've got You know, we've got about 380 milliamps um, at this point um, that's keeping our surface charge on the battery. And you'll notice that the DMM on the left indicates positive current flow um, because current is flowing from the power supply. And you'll notice the DMM on the left indicates negative current flow because the current is flowing into the battery. Now, we can actually um, cause the current uh, flow to change with respect to the battery from negative to positive and that's real simple. All we've got to do is just turn our power supply where we can bring it out of the equation and you'll notice the surface charge um, now uh, we're not keeping that on the battery so um, this number here is indicative of how much current it takes for that battery to make an indication on this voltmeter of the power supply. Now let's turn our accessory on, which is on battery power only. And you'll notice that we have a positive current flow from the battery, indicating that 3.8 amps are flowing from the battery um, through the headlight and returning back to the battery. So you'll notice that we've also got 11.4 volts here, which is substantially less than we have available from our power supply. Okay, so let's turn the accessory off. And now that we've depleted some of the surface charge on our battery, um, notice we're resting well below 12.6 volts. So as I bring the power supply back into the equation, we're going to notice it's going to take increased current um, from the power supply to recharge the battery. So let's take it back up to 14.4 volts and notice we're well over 3 amps. So we've got you know some 3 amps flowing from the power supply and 3 amps flowing into the battery. Now if we let it sit here like this for some period of time um, then we're going to be able to recharge the battery and we'll be back to just maintaining a surface charge on the battery.
So let's let that kind of normalize. Uh, when it gets down below an amp, we should be able to um, have our little battery charged up enough where we can continue. Keep in mind, guys, this is a little 10 amp hour battery. Um, all of this stuff is uh, easily scaled up. Um, that doesn't have near the capability or capacity of, say, something like an XST 3400. But for the purpose of this demonstration, it works just fine. All right, so now we're, we're about a half an amp, and we're close to having our battery charge replenished. Um, if we kick it up a little bit, we can get a little hotter charge in the battery, 14.7. Um, so now let's, let's bring the power supply out of the equation, and let's see where our battery rests. So I would say we're probably good enough to uh, continue with the demonstration. Now our battery is sufficiently charged back up. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our accessory on with our power supply sitting at 14.4 volts. And we're going to determine um, what powers our accessory. Now in this example, this is a headlight, but it could be anything. So um, I want you guys to notice that we do have... Um, fully charged battery. We're less than half an amp keeping the surface charge on it now. Um, we've got current flowing from the power supply into the battery as can be seen by both meters. Now I'm going to turn the light on and pay attention to the DMMs. Notice a couple things happen. Um, number one is that the DMM on the left now indicates that we need 4.5 amps um, to be able to power um, our accessory as well as keep a surface charge in our battery. Um, keeping a surface charge in our battery now requires 300 milliamps um, as you can see by the DMM on the right. And you'll notice that the, uh, the headlight is of a certain brightness. Now if I take the power supply out of the equation our headlight is obviously going to become significantly less bright and I can do that simply by turning it off and you'll notice that our headlight is a lot less bright and our battery now is doing all the work we notice because the amateur on the right indicates we've got 3.8 amps flowing from the battery to our, our headlight so let's put the power supply back in the equation And we'll bring her back up to 14.4, which you'll notice, you know, that's uh, significantly brighter, obviously. And we um, are going to take the battery out of the equation now to show you the difference in current that we can deliver at 14.4 volts versus at 11.5. Where before we were with the battery only, we were only about 3.8 amps. If I remove the battery from the equation, and I can do that by disconnecting the negative terminal on the battery. Let's do that. Notice our headlight brightness is not going to change. It does not. So the battery is now out of the equation. The negative terminal is loose. Uh, but more importantly, notice that 14.4 volts um, causes 4.2 amps of current to flow. So our headlight responds to that. Um, headlights respond to power, not necessarily voltage. So power is the summation of voltage and current. So 14.4 times 4.2 would be how much power that headlight is dissipating currently. Um, by the way, guys, I just took the negative off the battery. Now, it has been rumored that the battery negative in a vehicle is ground. And earlier I proved to you that um, we had a commonality between the negative terminal on the power supply and the uh, center pin on the AC plug, the ground pin and we did lift that so there's no ground from the earth um, connected to the circuit um, and we are battery negative well that's loose as you can plainly see um, let's pan back over so you can verify that that indeed is still in our outlet strip and you'll be able to see right there yep top one it's still got the 3-2 uh, adapter on it 
So, hmm, okay, that kind of dispels that myth. Um, so let's, uh, let's connect our battery back up. And what we're going to see is we're going to see, um, you know, our amateur on the left is going to increase, showing how much additional current it takes to keep a surface charge, or to charge our battery, rather. So the additional current um, from where we were to where we are now, about half an amp or so, um, you can see that's uh, simply what's required to uh, charge our battery or to maintain the surface charge, either or. Um, so we've got 450 milliamps uh, flowing into the battery. Um, so if we turn our accessory off, we're going to be left only with what's required to uh, keep a charge in the battery. which is about 450 milliamps, rough and tough. So guys, that's how alternators and batteries work in relation to accessories. Um, now, if you'll notice, when we first turn our headlight on, watch the activity on the amateur on the right. And what I'm going to do is, so we can capture it, let's actually enter the min-max mode and we'll record this data. So something happened there. And if we come out of the min-max mode, we can look and say that we've got 1.4 amps of current that was required from the battery when we first turned our headlight on. Even though our power supply is resting at 14.4 volts. And if we go to the minimum, we can see um, that's our surface charge. Uh, requirements. This number there. Hmm. What's that all about? Okay, before we move on to uh, the second and third parts of this demonstration, I want to show you guys something real quick. Um, we have the power supply powered up. We're sitting at 14.4 volts. We know our battery has got a surface charge. We can see it's just maintaining the surface charge. So we're going to turn our accessory on and I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to slowly back the power supply out of the equation and I'm going to show you guys what happens. So at some point we're going to actually be able to see that we're going to be able to change um, from negative to positive current on the amateur on the right. So watch where that happens, that's about 13.4 volts. So it's pretty commonly said that you've got to have about 13.4 volts uh, of alternator output to be able to cause a charge to flow into your battery. So we can prove that. And if we continue to um, decrease the output of the power supply back towards, uh, say, 12.6, let's go to 12.6, which is the nominal resting voltage of a 12-volt 12 uh, 12 battery, you'll notice that we've got 2.7 amps coming from the power supply and we've got one amp coming from the battery and combined we've got about four amps rough and tough to light our light at 12.6 volts so this is a point where both the power supply and the battery are being called on to power the accessory and as I continue to reduce the output voltage of the power supply as we get below what the battery is going to be able to rest at with that load on it, you will see the power supply go out of the equation. And that was about 11.5 volts. So as the power supply goes from positive to negative, now that 38 milliamp shown on the left is just the current required for that battery to indicate voltage on this voltmeter in the power supply. So um, that clearly shows the relationship between what happens when you're compromising the voltage of your alternator by drawing a lot of current from your amplifiers and how the battery is actually used to supplement what the alternator cannot produce. So.